Thank you to those of you coming in. This was a very fast live setup. Um, hopefully you can hear me. The news crew is outside of the courthouse. There is Tad being brought, I'm guessing brought out of the courthouse. I believe Tad had already had his hearing. Let me verify that though. Anything to say? Okay, so it looks like Tad is actually going in. Um, they did show Cole being brought in earlier. We did miss that part, unfortunately. So Tad was just brought in and taken inside the courthouse. Again, um, the judge is not allowing any cameras or video um, being done inside the courtroom. So everything is gonna be journalists. Brian Inton is an amazing, amazing reporter from News Nation, and he is there on the ground as well. So no doubt he's going to give an amazing, um, you know, he'll give us a lot of, of information from inside. We just saw Tad being taken into the courthouse, Mama Smith. So Cole was taken in first. We did miss that part. Um, Tad was just now taken. I'm not sure if I was muted or not, but Cole did go in first. We did miss that portion, unfortunately. Um, and then we did just see Tad go in though. He was asked if he had any comment. Of course, he did not answer anything. Brian Inton is there on the ground. Uh, so he will no doubt give us information once they have it. SWK, S girl, they have been taken in separately. We started at 9.30. So it's just bond hearings, is my understanding. Um, those are very, very usually very quickly done. There's Cole being brought back out of the courtroom, wearing his bulletproof vest. Again, thank you guys for being here on such a quick notice. Um, I did not get much notice either. So I just went live as quickly as I could. So I appreciate you guys being here. So Cole has completed his hearing. Had is now inside the courthouse. Hudson on the way. Thank you so much for becoming a new YouTube member. That's absolutely the best way to support this channel is by subscribing, liking the videos and becoming a member of the channel. So I truly appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you here. Heard that Cole got beat up in jail and was taken to ER. Anyone know if that is true? I have heard this same. I don't believe that that is true. I would think that they are segregated. Uh, from general population right now. That's usually is the case with something like this. Um, I did hear that he got a little bit on the beat up side, um, you know, when SWAT had to go out and arrest him. Um, nothing major. So that might be where that rumor is coming from. Okay. 
uh, Kenny Patch made a joke. And I want to add, it was Tad that I was told was uh, had gotten kind of beat up a little bit during the um, the initial arrest. I have not heard anything about Cole being beat up, so I do think that's probably a rumor. As is um, the it being said that they were either of them beat up in jail. That's why I asked him 10 times if he wanted to. Okay. So let me give you back these and then I'll just stay. So if you're just tuning in, if you've been here, um, it's going to get repeated often because we're going to have new people coming in often. Cole was taken into the courthouse first. We just saw Cole being brought back out. And then we saw Tad being taken in. They asked if he had any comment, and of course, he didn't say a word. So right now, Tad is having his initial hearing. I like how you got that metal and they are bringing them, the uh, officers are bringing them right in front of that news crew. So we're able to see them get out of the cop cars and then back into them. And then Brian Inton is there. So once all of the hearings have been done, no doubt him or one, you know, somebody from this new station, um, this is channel 10, will, um, you know, come and let us know what the results of that were. I know yesterday the uh, DA had made an entry on each of the four um, requesting no bond. My guess is they won't get bond at all. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, and then might as well just We're glad you're here. Yeah, with uh, the land, you know, they don't have a lot of it, it appears that they don't have a lot of cash. Um, you know, Tiffany definitely has a lot of civil judgments and suits against her for not paying bills and things like that, not paying things that she purchased. Um, so I'm, I'm not so sure that they have like cash money, but they they do have a lot of property that they very easily could use for bond if they wanted. So um, yeah, they should not have any bonds because these these people are going to take off if they do. That's that's my opinion. It's very sad, and there's such a bigger story here as well. Maybe not bigger, but another just as big story that that intertwines with this. It's just a sad situation for everybody, the communities, the families, the friends. I mean, you that are in the Facebook group, you can see how hurt uh, those that know these people are. They're absolutely, uh, you know, the majority are in shock and just trying to come to grips with how they were friends or how they thought these were good people, only to find out that they were capable of, of something so horrific. I can't imagine that that's, I, I can't imagine the thoughts and feelings that they have. So again, like I said earlier, or in the post um, that I made, I went live at the last minute. This was not planned. Um, we do know that they were not going to allow media in the courtroom with videos or cameras. So we weren't going to get any coverage of inside the courtroom, but Cole went first. We watched him being brought out the back of the car, and then we watched Tad being taken out of the um, patrol car, and he was taken into the courtroom. So we are able to see that much. 
and then um, the news will, you know, let us know afterwards. They have camera or uh, they have mics set up there and stuff. So somebody's going to speak afterwards, no doubt. Well, I didn't want to say that. Off subject, but I always like listening to the news crew when they're at the scene like this, because a lot of times you get a hot mic moment. So I'm always listening for those hot mic moments. I don't know about you guys, but I sure do. I believe that the DA will come out and make a statement <laughs> for the trials on that. I also have no doubt that, um, I mean, I really think that they are going to file for a, you know, to move, to move the trial to a different county. Everybody here knows everybody. So it's going to be kind of hard on a jury trial. send you everywhere, huh? Yeah. Mike's gonna be longer. Yeah, I don't think bond will be an option either at all, especially the DA's already requested no bond. So I don't think they're gonna get one, but it's a part of the case. So here we are. Thank you, missing stolen animals. We appreciate you always being here all the way from Ireland. This case has reached so many people and touched so many people. Dilly Pickles, thank you so much for becoming a new member. I really appreciate that. That is a great way to help the channel and cost much. I think it's a 99 cent level. Um, so I really appreciate that. I think that the DA, Sydney, the DA will come out eventually. Um, I feel they will go for the for the DP here in this case. We have to be kind of careful on YouTube how we say things. So DP, you guys can kind of figure out what that means if you don't know already. But um, I, I believe that a statement will be made eventually on that. Self-care sound says they just thought no one would care if they were if they went missing because of Elkhart being so quiet and ghosted. I think that they got away with so many dirty deeds for so long that they just thought that they would have um, cover, you know, under their local law enforcement and those that had been covering for them for quite some time. And I also don't think that they ever, ever in their wildest imagination thought it would get national news coverage. And that's why, you know, people were like, let law enforcement handle it. Well, of course, we're letting law enforcement handle it. But sometimes, and especially in the areas such as this, um, you really have to stay on it. And the national media is a huge, huge help in these kind of cases. You know, once that attention is on it, um, you know, it's kind of hard for officials, elected officials to back off of it. You know, there, there's really no choice. They're going to have to do it and do it right because all eyes are on them. Hi, Amanda. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being here. Dilly, I do too. And I had thought about it, but it is about a five hour drive for me. And I know that these hearings usually go very, very quickly. So 
I expect, you know, well, they have Tad in there now. It started at 930. So 30 minutes for two. So I expected about an hour overall um, for all four hearings. And that's a five hour drive for one hour is a long way. <laughs> so I'm so glad that the news is there covering this for us. And then we can also in turn bring it to you guys. They have not said that. Um, Tara and I have been given very, um, very good information from a very good source on that cause. Um, we might discuss that. I'm not sure if we will. Um, that's We haven't even had a chance to talk about it together. But um, I do believe we might be doing a live this evening, going over a little bit more of this case. You ready? You ready to come and if so, we'll give you a good heads up, at least in the Facebook group. If you're not yet a part of it, uh, please go join it. It is called Justice for KS Moms, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. It's a very large group and it looks like they're bringing somebody else. Maybe they're gonna bring Tad out or they're bringing somebody else in. Boy, isn't that the truth? Self-care sounds a lot of people have gotten away with stuff. And we're we're digging. We're digging deep. There's Miss Tiffany Adams herself. The most loving grandmother on the face of the earth. Coming at all. And I despise her. Ugh. I'm sorry, but the human in me just despises that woman with every breath I have. So they're probably going to be bringing Tad back out here in a second, as that's what they did with Cole. Um, yeah. Traveling Teresa, the judge was very good friends. In fact, he said he still is good friends and he was there um, at Tad's when the raid happened. He said he has no had no clues about their activities. Do I believe him? So my understanding is, you know, these people are, are pretty outspoken to people that know them about like, you know, basically kind of the people know some of the little bits and pieces of things, um, such as, you know, them being against the government, stuff like that. But they they're. I don't think a whole lot of them were completely aware of just how deep and troublesome uh, this group is. And let me tell you, there's four being arrested, but my understanding is you got about 36 more, around 36 more out there that are going to continue to do the same things that these four have been doing. They're going to continue it. They're going to want to keep it growing. And there is Tad Cullum. That is grandmother's boyfriend. And I heard a whole lot of stories about Tad while I was out there. Um, I was there for six days. And let me tell you, Tad and Tiffany have threatened a lot, a lot of people in that entire area for many, 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 many years. I'll try to get to some of your questions. Jay Thomas said, I heard that Jillian's husband was in the hospital due to the trauma of this. Is that true? That's not something I have been told. I don't know if it's true or not. I haven't been told that though. Jay 
She doesn't look anything like her prettied up pictures on Facebook and LinkedIn, that's for sure. But I, I think things really kind of started changing. Just maybe, I don't know, maybe over the last year or two, uh, maybe the last couple of years uh, when they're God's misfits, which is actually they call themselves American white nationalists. That is that is what they are. That's what they call. And the misfits group is just like the branch of that, what they call themselves. But they are American white nationalists, and we're going to call them for what they are. Right, Chastity? Well. Yeah, nurse North Carolina. <laughs> I think she's my my sentiment runs deep. You know, everybody pretty much despises her at this point. Even people that knew her and didn't know her in this way are just blown away by by all of this. I'm not blown away at all. I'm not even surprised that this happened because Veronica had been threatened so, so many times, her life threatened by these people, and law enforcement would not take her seriously. So this, you know, it was it was foreseen. But she had nobody to go to, nobody to turn to. She looks like Granny Clampett. <laughs> well, she could have braided her own hair. I don't know about the sunglasses, but I mean, she could have braided her own hair. I, I mean, usually in situations like this, they're put in, um, uh, you know, they're in a cell by themselves and they're not with the general population because, well, the biggest reason is that, um, you know, a danger... They don't want them to be hurt. We need them to be alive for this trial. And other inmates tend to not like things like this. So usually they're put in a cell to themselves originally. Um, and then the other reason for that is to make sure that they don't harm their own selves. Cool cat, they're not saying anything. That's why I'm talking. But if you don't like it, feel free to leave and you can go watch it somewhere else. Otherwise, thanks for being here. Yeah, I don't think she'd be able to wear sunglasses. <laughs> No, the judge that was uh, or is Tad's friend, he has not been um, over any of the cases that they that they have been involved in. He is in Elkhart, which is Kansas. As Conroy said, the Kellys were to relocate to our little town for Mr. Kelly to be the new pastor of the Willow Church in Indiana, Indianola. Yes, it is very sad. And he still has children to take care of as well. Um, people tend to forget that. You know, we hear so much about Veronica, and that's just because Veronica grew up there and so many people know of her. Um, but the Kellys also had, you know, four kids. One is um, like out of high school, but they, you know, they still have four children as well. Yes, the judge that was just um, made to resign was just a municipal judge there in Elkhart, Kansas. Self-care sound says, what more are they hiding or have hidden for others if they thought they could get away with this? My guess is quite a bit. And, um, you know, in the beginning, people were saying that there's a lot of unsolved murders or things like that. Well, there's not a lot, a lot of them, like how kind of how it was being made sound, but there definitely are some that were determined to be one thing where 
everybody around them, the family definitely felt differently. And there are a couple um, that are even in the same family, not these families, but in the same family of the person I spoke with um, that have never gone, uh, they're still unsolved and the family's never gotten any justice or any kind of answers. So um, we do have some people uh, researching all of that for us. No, getting old is not fun. I always had excellent eyesight until about five years ago. I never needed glasses in my life. And then all of a sudden I woke up one morning and I'm having to hold my phone or whatever, you know, way out from me. And I was like, oh man, oh no. <laughs> and then, so I, uh, I have like, um, I buy my 10 pairs on Amazon where you can buy them all at one time. And I think I have it on reorder for every three months because I lose those. And then I have my prescription. <laughs> Amanda Ballas, Veronica's dad, is engaged to my uncle's daughter. I hate this so much. I'm so sorry. I understand that her dad and um, his fiance were out there at least in the beginning, the initial searches. And Veronica's dad was very active um, trying to search and locate her. Sunshine, I'd rather not. <laughs> After I had quite some experiences while out there, I can say I am in Oklahoma though. I don't think that's been any secret. Well, Phoebe, that sounds just about right. <laughs> just about right, as I'm going to turn 50 here in August. Five years ago, yep. I've heard about that, Sheila. I'm, I'm not sure. We That is something we have not looked into um family has kind of asked us to keep the grandparents name you know out of things that they were very good people that they are you know absolutely rolling over in their graves right now at the horrific stuff that their their daughter has done and you know when her um when they inherited all that land and stuff her mom and another sister actually went against three other sisters so that in itself was another battle horrible battle for, uh, you know, for what the parents had, what they had to pass on. No, I'm not sunshine. Shoo, Dilly, it's no fun. Whoever said that earlier, it's definitely more fun growing up. Now you feel like you're on the, the downside of things. Yeah, that's pretty much how I felt too, Phoebe. <laughs> so if you're just joining, um, the reason you're not seeing much is the cameras are not allowed to be in the courtroom, but we have seen Cole uh, go in and come out Tad has gone in, come out, and then we just saw Tiffany go in. And then they do have mics set up outside of the courtroom so um, that one of the reporters will let us know. Yesterday, the DA did file um, so for no bonds. And, you know, my guess is they're not getting any, any bonds here, but... Cheryl, I think the facts might be a little bit off on that one, um, but we will. We are looking into it. Um, I have had family reach out about that situation and tell me it, it is what it was said it was. Um, JLR does some 
great reporting on some things and then other things he does tend to talk rumor or what he's heard so with that said i'm not so sure that that's correct Oh, she did. But the strange thing to me is she was able to get what at least four others to agree to it or at least give knowledge of. And that's kind of unheard of. And the only thing I can think of is because of their, um, you know, God's misfits group, the way of thinking. She had convinced them that the kids were in danger if they were with Veronica and you know, but the depths that these people went to is kind of, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, she, Tiffany definitely fought very, very hard for um, her mom and dad's inheritance. Yeah, I've heard that they are very good people. My understanding is that Vern's death was carbon dioxide poisoning. He was inside the truck and his dog found with them. He also did have some drug issues and some ODs um, previously. So that could be a lot of uh, that as well. So these have been taken about 15 minutes each. I wouldn't be surprised if Tiffany's brought out at any moment. And then we'll have Cora um, left. Now Cora um, made a entry on her case and she um, basically claimed constitutional um, amendment. So I'm pleased to say she must have pled the fifth something or she's invoking her whole um, the sovereign citizen thing. I'm not sure. So Tiffany is probably being brought out right now. So they're pulling up. This has been happening. So they're going to pull up with Cora. And she'll get out of one of those unmarked vehicles. Or the sheriff's vehicle. So that is Cora. Now, if you've seen Cora and Cole's pictures on Facebook, they look like a typical, very kind, family-oriented country couple. She sure didn't look like that in her mugshot, did she? It goes to show that people can put on some amazing public appearances and what you see is not always what you get. That's why I don't, I don't even have a Facebook. And then they're going to bring Tiffany out here any moment as well. Shh. 
Yeah, Joe Johnson, when we've been saying that this is a bad group, we, we really mean that we wouldn't be saying it um, if we didn't already have, you know, a whole lot of facts on it. We just haven't brought all that information out. I see the media is starting to, um, but we definitely have a lot of information on them who's involved with their group and all of that. And I 100% plan on um, putting all of that information out. Tara and I are just very careful with what we do put in the group or on the channel. We like, um, you know, we only want to bring you the facts and we want to be able to back those facts up for you guys. So it takes time to put all of that together rather than just jump on a live and start rambling about things. Um, just our way of doing things. Nothing wrong with the other way either. I don't think so. Okay, so Tiffany's going to come out now. Elena, she did. That's her right there, leaving the courthouse. Annie P, I understand that. I understand, you know, that there's many that feel that way, but this is to the extreme. So, like, you know, when you hear right wing extreme extremism, I didn't think these are right wing. Uh, Paul Greece has basically like denounced his entire citizenship to the United States. If that tells you anything. We know that um, Jillian's mother did put it in the group the night before we had actual verification. Um, they were deceased. Her mother did post in the group that they were deceased, or at least Jillian was, and that um, Tiffany had confessed. However, I just don't know how much truth to that is. I can't see Tiffany confessing to anything. Good question. The judge that actually stuck stuck with it, that it was, you know, Veronica should have the kids two different times, two court time, you know, two filings. She still gave the kids to Veronica. And that is the judge Larson that has been under 24 seven protection since the day that the or they day after uh, that these women, you know, were just reported as missing. She's also the judge that Tiffany had threatened. But the actual judges that finally um, approved the appeal in a higher court, I wonder, wonder how they're feeling. Right, Sarah. Sarah says, I'm not a big true crime person, but this is happening in my hometown. So heartbreaking. It's really hard to ignore it when it's right in your backyard, isn't it? No, I, I'm with you, Phoebe. I don't think she would ever, ever, ever confess. They had enough information. She didn't need to confess. Cora's daughter, the, the brave 16-year-old that we've all spoken of, she kind of sealed this for them, I think. Obviously, they, they were able to obtain a whole lot of other information, but um, her daughter played a significant role in helping this get to where it is now with them being in court.
as for Paul Grease, I do not know if he's been interviewed. Um, the rumor that he is on the run, I don't think that was quite a rumor. I still would not be surprised to see a couple more arrests. But I don't think it's rumor that he was on the run. I just don't. But, uh, yeah, if, if, uh, you know, hopefully if, if we can get back Friday, hopefully that should be okay. Um, and the yeah, you said it's just for a couple of days, right? So, like, uh, yeah. Veronica's attorney was on Chris Cuomo last night. Great. I will uh, try to remember that and share it in the group after this. I did share um, her attorney's statement. He had made a statement and I shared the printed version, but I'll be sure to, um, or if somebody else has that link, you're welcome to post it in the group. If it gets posted multiple times, the rest will be declined after the first, but you're welcome to post that in there. Yes, the judge did okay that meeting place. Um, Veronica, in her latest filing, she was trying to get that changed to Elkhart. Punch Buggy is absolutely correct in, in what you're saying. Been studying the sovereign citizen movement because it sometimes clashes with my job. It's common to renounce what, what they consider the quote unquote current U US government, which they deem to be illegitimate. That's absolutely correct. And that's what this whole group is about. That and a lots of guns and probably some, um, probably quite a few other crimes is my guess. The, yes, the daughter is very much being protected. So I think it's probably safe that I can say this now. After this occurred, the daughter must have gone to law enforcement very quickly. Because after this occurred... Okay, he's just talking about traveling. <laughs> so like I said earlier, I try to sometimes listen in to them, but I don't want you guys to just be watching a screen and there's nothing being said. But... Um, Okay, so um, while I was there on the ground, um, I received um, on good source that the daughter had not been in school that whole week. So the, yeah. the incident happened on Saturday. Monday, she was not in school. She wasn't in school the rest of the week. None of her friends had heard from her. Um, they didn't know where she was. And I'll be very honest, I was very, very, very concerned for her and what may have occurred. But what we do know now is that she was actually in protective custody. But, uh, all right, I appreciate it. And, yeah, give the heads up. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, yeah, I'll just call you. Oh, bless you. Bless you. I don't know if she'll brag. I just, I would be absolutely shocked if she confessed anything. Truly shocked. Because everything I know about her, that's that would not be in her personality to do so. Um, Cora and Cole, I'm not sure about that. Tad, I don't think he'd confess. And I'm so glad they did call in the OSBI right away. Um, OSBI was there what, in just a couple of hours um, or a few hours. So thankfully they did. And then when the FBI, um, you know, we we had found out that the FBI was actually going to be going in last Wednesday and we didn't say anything about it, um, but they were definitely coming in pretty heavy at that point. And then, of course, we saw what occurred, um, you know, this last weekend. Interesting that Tiffany, Cole, and Tad looked straight ahead, but Cora held her head down. Yeah, kind of. I mean, her mugshot was the one mugshot that she just looked totally pissed off about, 
you know, even being arrested, like, I don't know, it's just like a cocky looking to her face. It's a Houston, absolutely. Um, you can email me at harrymoodybooks at gmail.com or uh, you can reach out through the Facebook group and just click on my name, um, Terry Moody True Crime, anywhere in any of those posts or comments and you can message me directly and I do read um, all messages. I try to respond to every single one of them. Yes, she's she's safe and she has protection and she is with uh, her, she's with her family. Okay. Self-care sounds, yes, absolutely. Please message me. Um, the communities there have been a ton of help as far as us being able to get information and what we needed to dig into. And uh, we really appreciate all of that, all that information. And we've kept it completely anonymous. Um, if you watched any of our lives, you'll know 99% of it we have never even spoken about yet. So um, please do reach out. The EBI was also told that I wasn't, I was never able to um, verify that that was the case. But while I was there, I was told that she had told a teacher. Um, but we didn't know where she had gone from that point, just that she hadn't been in school all week. And her friends and friends' parents were concerned because none of them had had any contact with her. Now, hindsight, we now know that she was in protective custody. CB Slinger, I and I, I think they are. I think people just genuinely wanted to want to make sure that, you know, she's safe. And if they're just coming into this case, they don't really know. Um, so we're just verifying that. But otherwise, um, we the discussion of children, any of the children, is pretty much off limits. Has there been anything a reporter on any rumors of domestic violence from phone Cora? No, I've not ever heard anything like that. Well, hello from West Virginia, American Nana. Thank you for joining in. So right now we're just waiting for Cora to be brought out and she's the last one. Yeah, I'm with you, SWKS girl. Punch buggy, funny you mentioned that. I think that that was actually a question Tara and I asked each other too. Like, hmm, I wonder. So here comes Cora back out on her way back to the jail. Still with her head down. As of now, none of them have retained attorneys. Um, I don't know with them being sovereign citizens, well, I, if they'll even, I'm not sure what how that'll work. So it'll be interesting. Are they gonna pull a Daryl Brooks? Any of you watch that, that was, that was something else. Yeah, 
Exactly. Feed. Uh, law enforcement got the bodies and so much evidence, they would not have to plea bargain. They would not need their pleas. And I really don't think they would. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any kind of plea bargaining happening. Tiffany does not have a teenage daughter. At least not teenage anyway. Which one? Is that your personal one? Sally, I've covered a few cases where custody battles have turned out this way. Hopefully they're not just completely ending the live. Let me refresh the page and see what's going on. I wouldn't think that they would have just ended it like that. But they did. All right. So they ended it. Um, we, I'm really surprised. Let me see um, real quick if I can find maybe News Nation, uh, Brian Enton. Maybe he will go live or something real quick. Has everybody watched? Um, I want to show you this. Um, let's show you this real quick. Because it looks like they went, they ended that live. Advisory today, there was a tornado last night, and now there's another big storm moving in. So it's going to get a little wet, but I want to get to all of our points. Uh, yes, I went to the house in the area where the bodies were discovered. Um, it's about eight and a half miles or so from where the mom's car was left in a very rural area. It is a piece of land that Tad uh, was renting, was leasing out from an owner there. Um, and there was a barn there. The bodies were discovered near a dam. There was some digging, and that's when they found them. Uh, the owner I met with, uh, he, he was crying when he was telling me the story. Totally shocked by all of this. Can't believe it. Can't believe this happened on his land. Was shocked when the police showed up and started digging. Uh, but that is where, uh, where those women were found, Ashley. Okay, so now tell me, there's so much I want you to unload here, but you also got an interview today with Tad Cullum's business partner, who happens to be a municipal judge, who was coincidentally there at Tad's house while Tad's house was being raided. And then there's been a big twist tonight. Tell me everything that's happened. There is, and I'm gonna get to the twist in a second, because this is really crazy and goes back to the point that people here are very scared to talk. But yes, we talked to the municipal judge here uh, happened to be walking by, got in the car with me and chatted. He is a good friend of Tad. He is a business associate. Uh, they um, were working together. He was at Tad's house when the SWAT team showed up. You remember Nancy Lou had that crazy video. The SWAT team showed up uh, and he was there. He had a, a gun pointed at his face, he says. Um, and he also knows a little bit about this, this group, um, the, uh, the, the God's Misfits, the religious cult group. I asked the judge about it. I listened to what he told me, Ashley. When's the last time you saw Tad? I was there when they raided it. You were there. Tad and I have been working together the last month in a, a business. And I was down there when it was raided. 
what was that like? Being with a military pa past in Vietnam, it brought back some really bad memories. Uh, looking down the barrel of those rifles was very hard for me. It, it brought back a lot of memories, a lot of bad things. Did you ever get a bad vibe from Tad? No, no. Tad was one of the nicest, funniest. I seen him almost on a daily basis this last month. We were working together. I, I couldn't even believe he was involved in it. What about Tiffany? Uh, I didn't see her a lot. I've known her for years. Uh, always thought she was just a little bit out in left field. But again, just never believed that they would do this kind of thing. According to the affidavit, they were involved in this group, God's Misfits. Yes. What do you know about that? Never even heard of it until this come up. Knew zero, nothing about it. And what have you learned? <sighs> to me and what I've heard, and, and I, I can't say this for fact, what I've heard, it, it's kind of like a, a cult. Uh, they, they, a lot of cults use God as their background to justify what they're doing. To me, that's what it sounds like. Are they anti-government? Very, very anti-government. Okay, so in a very strange twist, Ashley, I just uh, was notified that that judge was forced to resign after doing that interview with me this afternoon. Uh, the, um, the mayor, he was appointed by the mayor and the mayor basically said, I'm not happy you did the interview and talked about any of this and said, you, you know, we want your resignation. And he had to submit a letter of resignation. Keep in mind, he didn't talk at all about, you know, anything in a professional sense. He's just a municipal judge. He has nothing to do with the, with the, with the case at all. Just goes back to like why people are not wanting to talk around here, how powerful these suspects are. And now this judge is out of a job just for t telling us that story this afternoon. And, and again, that story has absolutely nothing to do with the uh, murder or the evidence or anything, um, just the experience of what the arrest was. Uh, it's astounding. And I'm sorry, Brian, you're getting pelted with rain. I can't let you go, though. Did this judge know anything about Paul Grice, that fifth man that we are mystified about? Does he know him? Does he know why he wasn't arrested? Any info? No, um, he knew absolutely nothing about him, which is interesting because he knows pretty much everybody in town. Uh, everybody we've asked for the most part doesn't know much about him. I mean, you, you touched on it earlier, though. Um, he was also, according to authorities, part of God's Misfits, the group. Uh, he was apparently involved in this plot to kill Veronica uh, back uh, earlier this year. So we know that from the affidavit, but we're not really having an easy time getting other information on him and, and why he wasn't arrested. You know, is he perhaps not cooperating with the investigation? Uh, we haven't been able to, to nail that down at this point. Thank you for watching. Go to News Nation. So what do you guys think about that? In his inter first interview, he knew nothing about it. Tad's still his, his good friend. He's there the day that, that Tad was raided. The second interview, after he was uh, told to resign, he suddenly learned a whole lot more about uh, what was going on. Now, while I was there, <clears throat> excuse me, I stayed in Elkhart. And about two days before I left, I was told that Tad and that judge, along with other men, would get together every morning for coffee at the um, little coffee shop just right down from our motel. And I remember this specifically because, you know, we had already been kind of harassed and threatened. And um, yeah, so they're live again. All right, let me pull that up real quick. Give me just one moment. Not that one. Okay, so I'm not seeing that KFD is live again. Um, 
Um, without a doubt, they did not receive on. That's probably all that is going to be said um, regarding it. So, yeah, they don't believe in our justice system. So uh, it's just going to be interesting to see, um, you know, how this plays out. Yeah, I don't see their live again. I'm also watching Brian Nitton's ex. Okay, so he he does have an update one minute ago. He said extremely emotional court hearing for four suspects accused of killing Kansas moms. Victims' family members had to be held back as suspects were brought into court. Family called Gr Grandma Tiffany Adams a effing bitch as she entered, and the others, sorry, pieces of shit. Bond denied. So family members had to be held back. I don't doubt that one bit. What I've heard from them, they are, I mean, just unbelievable amount of pain that they are in. So that is the update from Brian Anton right there. I don't see the news channel being live. But again, the update from Brian. Um, he's with News Nation. Extremely emotional court hearing for four suspects accused of killing the Kansas moms. Victims' family members had to be held back as suspects were brought into court. Family called Grandma Tiffany Adams a effing bitch as she entered, and the others, quote unquote, sorry pieces of shit. Bond denied. Bond denied for all four. And I'll see if he's got any other. So that's a that's the only information. And I kind of figured that's all that we would get. You know, this was a bond hearing. That's all it was for. Um, so that is the news. Um, the victims' families are, were very angry and had to be held back outside the courtroom, possibly inside the courtroom. We didn't hear them saying that outside. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, they're at, they're in a ton of ton of pain, tons of pain, and their friends are too. And I know a lot of people are upset with some you know friends that have posted in the group, but they are in pain as well because they did not see these people that way. And these friends, you know, probably are friends that weren't members of their God's Misfits or the American um, Nationalist State uh, or American State Nationals that they consider themselves. One last thing I want to share with you real quick is that um, the, uh, Veronica's attorney had made a statement yesterday. I posted that in the group, but Chris Cuomo did an interview with him last night. And thank you, the person that brought this to my attention. So the last thing, I just want to play this for us real quick, and um, and then we're going to wrap up. Well, how could a custody battle turn deadly? Joining us exclusively is Oklahoma attorney Garrett Oates, who had recently been uh, taken on to represent Veronica Butler in the custody battle. Now, in court documents, we learned that Veronica had accused Tiffany Adams, this grandmother, of essentially kidnapping her kids. A lot of you keep asking me, what is this habeas corpus? That is Latin. You have the body. It is a federal demand to produce somebody, in this case, the children. Counsel, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Chris. I, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here with you, but I'm also deeply saddened. And no one, uh, especially in this position, uh, this is not uh, where I want to be, for sure. So, but thank you for having me. Understood. And I know how rare this is, a situation where you lose a client, let alone under these circumstances. But how have you been able to make sense of the motivation, even if it's madness in this? Do you think it was about this group, the misfits? Or do you think this is about a, a grandmother with no more sense of morality who was willing to kill to keep the kids? You know, Chris, I... I can't speculate about the group. I was unaware of anything to do with this uh, sovereign citizen group that you guys have been reporting on prior to law enforcement talking about that. Um, certainly there's been some information about them in the uh, probable cause affidavits that have been released. But beyond that, I had absolutely no knowledge, had never heard of the group before. 
um, law enforcement releasing that information. So uh, to say that, you know, I have any information as to whether or not that group was the motivation, I, I don't know that. Um, I, what I do know is that um, Veronica was a lovely lady. Um, she was what you want in a client. Absolutely. She was organized, diligent. She made my job a heck of a lot easier. Um, she brought me four expand files of information the first time I met her. That was all stickied and, and tallied, ready to go for me. Um, she was um, extremely respectful. Um, just like I say, everything you want in a client, in a person. Um, she absolutely loved her children. And that was the goal was absolutely to um, get her more time and then to be on the path to uh, regain custody. That was our plan for sure. Did Veronica have any kind of sense of what she was up against in this dispute? Um, again, with regards to the group, I can't speculate as to that. And so, and, and Veronica had never mentioned the group to me either. So I'm, I'm at least of the well, belief just the that grandmother. Veronica, just the grandmother. Um, certainly, uh, when Veronica first met with me, there was the. Uh, normal custody battle type information being exchanged where um, both parties um, or from her, Veronica's perspective, right? I mean, both parties are really warring with each other, especially in a custody battle that had been going on for years, right? Uh, but beyond that, what really struck me was the information that uh, you guys had reported on. Um, Tiffany Adams' own son, Wrangler Rickman, had put some posts on social media about threats that his own mother had made against him. That was what really raised my eyebrows uh, firstly um, in speaking with Veronica and what I thought kind of made this a little bit different than a normal custody case. Um, and, and certainly, like I say, raised my eyebrows, gave me some pretty serious cause for concern. But I think Veronica knew that uh, obviously it was a very extremely serious situation, uh, but to know that somebody is capable of doing something and then uh, that they would do something, I mean, are two very different things. Her sense or your sense about what was driving the grandmother's interest in the custody? Oh, well, I mean, uh, I certainly had many conversations with Veronica, both in person. And you had family members having to hold back other family members trying to actually go after the suspects, which in light of everything they're going through and having to be so close to these um, people accused of such heinous crimes, you know, you, in a way you, you, you can't really blame them. You can kind of understand just how raw the emotion was. I think each and every one of us sympathizes with what they're going through and the nightmare uh, that they're living. Brian, what's, what's next now that this hearing has taken place? What's the next step in, in the court case? So there will be a hearing on May 15th. Uh, that is when they will have a status hearing and, and um, several of the suspects will appear with their new lawyers that they will be hiring. And remember, um, many of these suspects, Tad and, and Grandma Tiffany in particular, these are wealthy people from what we can tell. They own a lot of land. They have a lot of influence in this community. They have a lot of business connections. Uh, so we would presume they're going to get, you know, high dollar defense attorneys uh, to represent them because, you know, they, they clearly have the resources. I'm wondering, Brian, as in a lot of these hearings, it's early on, right? Bond is set, um, not guilty pleas are usually entered. Any evidence provided? Is there anything new we learned about uh, the evidence prosecutors had that led to their arrest today? Not really in particular. What happened is they brought each suspect in one by one. Um, so they kind of went through the same process uh, four times and read the charges. There weren't any new details that we didn't already know from the police reports. Um, but the main point was just to read them their charges, uh, to see if they were gonna hire a, a private attorney. Um, and, and really, again, what I walk away just thinking about is just um, seeing all those family members. Uh, and, and that was just really quite a moment, just the, the raw emotion. Yeah, uh, and, and did the suspects respond at all when they were being called names? Did they interact with these families? No, not at all. They just um, sort of looked straight ahead. Uh, I didn't even really see them make eye contact at all with the um, with the victim's family members at all. I mean, clearly they heard what they were saying and could feel the emotion and knew that the one uh, gentleman was trying to lunge at them. But no, they didn't. They didn't make eye contact at all with anyone um, and just sort of um, looked straight ahead and, you know, answered yes, no to all of the questions. Um, I was thinking back to that, you know, there, there's these um, 
the, the allegation is that they were all in this cult called God's Misfits, an anti-government cult. And it, it was almost like they were, I think they knew what to expect coming into court. And if they, they really have this anti-government sentiment and they only believe in God's law, which is what we've been told, um, you know, it was just like they were almost like emotionless. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I have less than a minute left. Was there anybody in the courtroom in their defense um, supporting these four today? No, not that I saw. Um, I didn't see anyone from their families. And it was interesting. Other court hearings I've covered, normally the media has to sit in the back row. Um, and when we went in, they said, you know, media, uh, and there weren't very many of us. There was just a couple of us, but we, that we were gonna, could sit in the front and, and second row, which I thought was interesting. And now I'm just thinking about it. I think that uh, the court staff realized just how like volatile, it was a small room. It was going to be very, very volatile. So they wanted to keep the family members, obviously, um, you know, in, in the last rows. Yeah, very small town. Everybody knows somebody. And and in this community that's been living this nightmare for the last two weeks, uh, that journey will continue. Just thinking about those families, I know you're going to be talking to them yeah. as you're on the ground there, Brian. Please give them our best. Uh, Brian Anton reporting from Oklahoma. We'll have full coverage throughout the day here on News Nation. We're going to take another short break. More news straight ahead. All right. Thank you for letting me know News Nation was live. Um, apparently, Brian also interviewed uh, Veronica's aunt. Um, we did miss that part, um, but I'm sure they're going to put the full clip up on their YouTube channel here shortly. And when they do, we'll post that to the group as well. Um, as far as Coors jumpsuit, I believe wasn't there one of them that was arrested in a different county? If so, that that's possibly why. Maybe it was her. Um, somebody else said something. I wanted to clarify. Okay. It's this one right here. There's a story of this group in Miss in call Moffitt, Colorado. Okay. Those are completely different. And they've made a statement and they're like, you know, these people basically stole our name. I did I did research into them. They do really good things. They call themselves misfits because they were previously people who have been in jail or whatever and it kind of turned their lives around. They do a lot of good. They're a very giving group. They help their communities immensely. Um, and they really want to make it clear that they are not affiliated in any way with these this group here um, out there in Griggs, Oklahoma. The ones in Griggs, they call themselves uh, white state nationalists. And um, their smaller group name is called, um, you know, God's Misfits. But they had a face it. Facebook messenger group going for their whole group. Right. And that group's name was called ASN info. So American state nationals, nationalist info. That was the name of the group on their Facebook uh, messengers anyway. But I, I really don't want it associated with the one in uh, Colorado uh, that does have a Facebook page and a website because they are not the same. All right. And yes, yeah, so I did read, um, you think Cora flipped? I don't know. She might have. I mean, she's the one that said something to her daughter. And she's also the one that made her daughter clean uh, pickup trucks. So that, that in itself just as evil as can be to me. And we're certainly going to look into that, Onio, 100%. Veronica's aunt said she had to hold her brother back from loaning a suspect. I don't doubt that one bit. I mean, if I was if I was family, I would be the exact same way. They would have to hold me back in every sense of the word. So um, in MSCW Girl, we're about to wrap up. But just real quick, um, Brian Inton uh, was in the courtroom. He did a tweet. He said, extremely emotional court hearing for four suspects accused of killing Kansas moms. Victims' family members had to be held back as the suspects were brought into court. Family called Grandma Tiffany Adams a quote-unquote effing bitch as she entered, and the others quote-unquote sorry pieces of shit. Bond denied for all four. Oh, I'm, I, I can't imagine that kind of emotion. So 
as far as um, was it really scary in that area of town? The overall, it wasn't scary at all. We knew exactly who the group was. We know quite a few names of them, uh, members, um, names that you guys haven't heard yet, obviously. Um, I mean, we were followed. We were, you know, they drive by nonstop. Um, yeah, it, that part, that was a little scary. But the, the community there, um, you know, they made very sure I had many, many very, very kind and very well armed men in my inbox at all times. And if we had needed any kind of help, we would have had it instantly. Also, the um, sheriff's department, um, at least I think, is it Norton or Morton County? I can't remember. It's Kansas. The sheriff's department there in Elkhart is where we stayed and uh, they were amazing. But we did not get too close to Tad's um, area. And obviously, the day that we were going out to uh, the Plainview School, which is where uh, Cole Twombly owns land directly behind it, um, and that's where they would hold their meetings and stuff. As we were on our way there, we did get what I took or what we took as a pretty threatening comment, um, and we did decide to turn around at that moment. So we never got within a mile of that area that um, they live in. Uh, Barrett Cook leases land off of these people, so he still comes into play. Um, we, I have kept his name out of this because, you know, he's pretty innocent as far as the original rumors of the butcher, things like that. Other people were calling Cole the butcher. That's incorrect. Barrett Cook has been the butcher. My understanding, and we're still digging, um, is that he moved there a couple of years ago from Colorado. You can kind of put two and two together. It's also my understanding that he very well may have been the one that started this whole group out there. So he does play a huge role. Whether or not he was directly involved or had knowledge of these crimes, we don't know that yet. And, and I'm not going to accuse him of that. But uh, the kids were, you know, at his home that morning. They'd stayed the night, the night before. Um, they... Uh, Barrett and his wife homeschool their children, which is not surprising. And I don't have anything against homeschooling. They homeschool their children. It's my understanding that other children in this, in their group of God's misfits, uh, spent a whole lot of time at um, the Cook's residence. Brian said three of the four have the funds and have intentions of hiring private attorneys. He did not state which one did not have the funds or intention to hire a private attorney. Hmm. That's interesting. I bet you it's going to be Cora has no intention on hiring a private attorney. She's the one that made that filing pro se filing the other day um, regarding the constitutional rights. So it might be Cora. Morton County absolutely has amazing sheriff's officers. 100%. We got to meet uh, two of them and truly they were just amazing. They really were. We came back one evening to the motel, you know, and every evening you'd come back. My car stands out like a sore thumb and every single night we'd go back. I just expected my car to be spray painted, tires slash. You, I mean, the whole works. I really did. And one evening got back and my front tire was completely flat. It had two PSI and I thought, yeah, okay, here we go. But I had been on one of the country roads the day prior. So, you know, I did figure probably a nail I had run over. Um, the under sheriff there actually um, followed me to the tire place. He, he Well, didn't follow me. He arrived there immediately after he knew where I was going. But he had tried to get in touch with the tire place for me. Uh, so they were an immense amount of help. Um, they, they were just great. And we truly, truly felt safe with uh, Morton County Sheriff's Department. I don't think uh, me and the other lady that I was with could ever thank them enough because they really were great. Yeah, the judge hung out there right there in Elkhart. That's what I was saying earlier, every morning, um, him and Tad, along with some other guys, would go to the coffee house there in Elkhart and hang out and talk and I found out a couple of days before we left that really made me a little bit nervous because, you know, that was literally probably three blocks from where we were staying. Um, and knowing the fact that he was, you know, right there every morning was a little unnerving for sure. But 
we were safe. We made our home safe and all is good in that aspect. So I don't know. We're, we'll look into that now that that's been said. We'll definitely look into that. But I'm going to say, the so the grandma, she does have money. I mean, she does. And but and a lot of what they have is in property. Um, Tad, not so much. Tad doesn't own quite the amount of property that uh, Tiffany does. Cole and Cora, I'm just guessing Cora may be the one not obtaining that private attorney because of her own pro se filing yesterday. Maybe she's going to go the Daryl Brooks route and thinks that she can defend herself. It is so hard telling at this point. But anyway, that's all we have for right now. That was just kind of breaking. We went live real fast. And um, I appreciate you guys joining me for this. I believe that Tara and I might be live this evening. If so, we'll give you a heads up in the group. And we would love to have you join us um, at that time. But again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your interest in this case and helping us spread the awareness of what's going on. We appreciate every one of you, every single person out there helped this come uh, get to the point where it is now. I truly believe those that talked, those that, you know, talked to law enforcement and new information, um, you, it was, it took, it took a whole bunch of people to make this happen for sure. But uh, thank you again for being here. Uh, please just um, give the video a like. That helps a whole lot. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe and um, make sure you turn on notifications so you know when we go live again. And with that, I will see you all in the group. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Take care of each other. And we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.